community research and how we involve the community with that. So I think the recommendation is that that group continue to explore that piece of work and continue to feed back to the community. Agreed. So the first recommendation, oh, the first recommendation is that on all these projects we actually ask that our task and finish groups uh, continue work on them and if, if possible complete them and then we talk about to our first available meeting. Are people happy with that? Very good.
Leonora Brace. I did make a question last time about, as I have a disabled bay, unfortunately I have to park on the pavement, so do a lot of the rest of the residents, because buses come up and down, and also lorries, and I live in Boundary Road, which is just opposite Bidston Hill. It would be far better if they made it a, just a one way. Unfortunately, I have had my car smashed last year, due to the fact I, when I parked right in the middle of my disabled bay and now I have to park on the pavement. Can, I, can anyone answer the annoying question? How is that? We can certainly understand what, what, what there would have to be is consultation with all of the residents in Boundary Road, or in that section of Boundary Road. They'd all have to be consulted with and I think we have to get about 60, 70 or 80 percent agreement for it to go to a one-way system. So you're talking quite a heavy amount of people who would need to be in favour of that. I travel up and down that road regularly, you know, and I've told you this before when you asked the question the last week. And I don't find a problem in two-way traffic along that road. But if you want me to instigate a consultation on Boundary Road with a view to instigating a one-way system, I'll do that for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Your work will now be cut out, you know, we're getting up to 60 plus. I think it would be far better. Leonora, if we could actually minute your question. A minute Harry's response. And if <coughs> legal officers could actually then tell you the percentage of residents you actually have to get to make a success of this would be helpful. Yes, Not to make it wiser, I take my dog walking, I live just off the road on Munster Road. And it does seem like it does need to be widened a little bit, but then there is mutual respect between drivers there, isn't there? They should come around, and maybe not put the one way, look at widening it. It's only a day track on the other side. Well, to widen it across an Thank you. 
and with the situation down there has moved from being serious prior to this winter to urgent because of the wind bad storms we've had over the winter. Um, I'm sure you all know the rock part of the conservation area and it's a magnificent part of it. And I think that along with this town hall, with their Thomas on Square, with the park in, in Birkenhead and Central Library, Rock Park is one of the places that gives Birkenhead its character and that's why uh, we need to put maximum effort into making sure it's there for the future. Um, there are three parts to, to Rock Park itself. There's the residential part, um, then there's the Esplanade, which forms part actually incidentally of the Wirral Coastal Pathway, which the council promotes and asks people to use, even though it's not safe to walk on there. So there's an interesting point there. Um, and then there's the River Wall. Um, when I first came on the council in 1996, one of the first meetings I went to as a, as a new councillor was for the then chief executive of the council, Omega, to explain some very ambitious um, and exciting plans for the regeneration of Rock Ferry and Tramia. And those plans included the centre of Rock Ferry, it's now the urban village, Church Road and Rock Park. Now, sadly, for several reasons, um, Church Road and Rock Park fell out of that scheme. And although it's great to see the Rock Park being um, regenerated now, Rock, Rock Park, uh, Church Road, it's Rock Park never managed to get that investment to begin, which now would be about two million and because that hasn't been done, the Esplanade and the River Wall have deteriorated further. And I think at this point I need to explain that the Esplanade is actually in the ownership of the Rock Park Estates Company, which is in the people who own um, properties in, the, um, in Rock Park. But they're very willing to hand over the ownership if a suitable regeneration scheme uh, is found. Um, and then the River Wall, the ownership of that's unclear because there's quite a bit of documentary evidence to indicate um, that it may be owned by the Crown, and officers of the um, council and with Frank Pell are looking into that. Um, it is known for certain that the Esplanade and the um, River Wall were built at different times and by different people. And when the River Wall was built, it was built on Crown land. And nothing has come to light so far to indicate that it had ever been passed away from the Crown. So it is worth pursuing this, I think. But now we come to the urgency of the conversation, which is a very severe weather of the winter has led to further very serious damage to the protective wall and so, and so to the Esplanade. And we're in a position now that if we don't do something in the way of essential repairs at this point, there won't be anything left to um, preserve for the future. And that's why I brought the report to this committee for consideration for a sum of money to be allocated through the environmental budget um, to, first of all, allow essential repair work and then to encourage to a, you know encourage actively encourage officers of the council to continue looking for funding to regenerate Rock Park and also to pursue ownership of the River Wall. And I do hope you'll um, support the recommendations of the committee. Can you just tell us it's more a lot of recommendations? The recommendations are that officers of the council continue to work in uh, pursuing ownership of the River Wall but a sum of ten thousand pounds allocated So there are three parts there. Before we actually put it um, to me, you've got a question? Yes, Global Oaks Board of Commons approved a friend of mine actually owns a lot of people around the town there, and has been spending thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds in doing that to those builders, trying to build walls and everything. It's really, really urgent to need this particular you know, tool and you know, to help the town.
that we, we, sorry, that we need to keep. And really, my, my question really was, was it in connection, and I don't know, maybe Phil uh, can help us, the, the, uh, the Coastal Communities Fund we heard a little bit about. I don't know whether would that Rock Ferry, New Ferry, is that outside of the area that would be covered by the Coastal Communities Fund? Yes, it is, and that's, that's how we got into the discussion about what the wall down there is classified, whether it's a seawall or a river wall. And in fact, I would assume it was a seawall. If we go along the D side of the borough, the sea defences extend to the end of the borough of Wirral, which is Pebble. If we come on the Mersey side, it finishes at sea point, and the rest becomes a river wall, and therefore not covered by that application. And that's part of the problem, that it would be much easier to solve if it was a Laura, I think this is actually looking about whether that the, the seawall principle can be extended there. Um, well, I've had a meeting with um I can't remember if I was in the other person in the other part of the um and they were saying I could I have to go back and look at the details yet, but it's covered absolutely clearly by an act, so there's no room for wriggling on that aspect. Right, are people happy with that recommendation? Fully supported. Great, thank you very much. Then we're on to dates of next meeting, 24th of July, 30th of October, 29th of January, and the 8th of April. Are people happy with those? All right. Dawn, you've got some other business before we open up for questions. First discussed it for them. Um, the, the, what Stuart had exactly he said before, well, the council had moved to a three month uh, cleaning of entries. 
Um, but in the budgets this year, this year's budgets, we put it back in for the 2000. That now allows for a monthly theme of claims and inventories, exactly as it was prior to it. So therefore, that, that is now complete. What we're saying is that we had a £20,000 earmark to do some work with. And what we're saying is we'll retain that. So that when we have the other incidents, like we mentioned before, where something is waiting to be moved, this other, other um, group, um, which we'll, we're saying will be from the third sector organisation, including work and volunteer opportunities, will be from work with their head based people. So we will be looking at them only their head. So we're going to have our own in their head, whereas the one. Structuring our measures there, 